What's going on everyone? Ancap24 here from playbook.gg. And in today's video, we're gonna take another chat request as far as run defense, and it's gonna be from John Wick 825 He asked how to stop single back wing tight Z stretch. He says it's one of the most annoying run plays in the game and that he's having a hard time stopping it. We got six additional likes on that comment, which indicates to us that there's definitely more than one person that is interested in this type of video. So we're gonna go ahead and show it to you. Now, if this is the first time checking out our channel and you want to win more games playing Madden, hit that subscribe button below. Don't forget to also click that bell icon to make sure you never miss any of our videos. All right, so with the halfback stretch, guys, it's definitely a tough run to stop because if you can see on the play art, there's two tight ends to the right. And you got an additional wide receiver all the way to the outside, making it a really nice overload stretch play that you can kind of quick hike it, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to cover three out of the 4-4 four, four split and show you how we want to run this play, okay? So what we're going to do is show you two different examples of how to basically use a really aggressive approach and then a conservative approach, depending on what type of player you are, depending on your personnel, and depending on basically you know, the situation of the game. You know, If you need to get aggressive on fourth and one, even if you're a conservative player, you may go with the first uh, setup, okay? So go with aggressive here. And what I'm going to do here is show blitz, then I'm going to spread my linebackers. Then I'm going to blitz the A linebacker here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that his angles to the middle of the field. You want to move him to where he stacks on the defensive end to where now his angle goes to the right. Okay. The last step is I'm going to crash left or slant left. And that's going to get his angle to come straight down. That's what you want for this to succeed. The only other step is your user. Okay. March is your user here. What we want to do in order to make this work is we want to sprint right at the 74 player here. He's the right tackle in order to put him in conflict. What's going to end up happening is the player that you're blitzing and the user is going to be a 2 on one on that um, right tackle. And as long as you get close enough to that tackle, he is going to choose the inside threat, which is yourself, leaving the other player open. So you do want to make sure that here Smith is going to be a player in which has high tackling, has something that if you're in mutt has abilities, if you, you can, just to make sure that he makes the secure tackler, it's going to be a use um, a computer controlled player, okay? So I'm gonna just go ahead and basically sit in this gap right here just so that I'm a little bit closer. When I hike the ball, I'm gonna sprint this way and you're gonna see how that guy goes ahead and makes that tackle. Let me show it to you on instant replay so you can slow it down to understand why we set it up the way we did. What happens here is again is that number 74 is going to have to, because we crash the left, he's going to be somebody that we isolate. We purposely isolate this right tackle. This is an approach that you can do with other runs as well. We're going to try to teach you a concept. When we isolate him on the stretch play, we know that he has to cover or basically block one of the two players. If we get close enough with our user, he's going to choose the inside threat and you're gonna be able to clean up with that player, okay? If he was to choose, like if you weren't close enough and he was to choose the uh, blitzer, then obviously you're gonna be the one that's free and you're gonna be the one that cleans up. It's definitely easier if you go and get closer to 74 so he chooses you because the angle in which we put this uh, linebacker really is a nice option to where once the player gets the ball, there's no movement. He can't go right. He can't go left. This is really the first opportunity that a user can move this player, and he's going right into a tackle, okay? So let's show it to you again just so for consistency purposes. You're going to show blitz, spread line, blitz the right screen player. You're going to see that he's inside. Move him to over this player. Crash left, and you're all set. You move this guy in just a little bit to get a little bit closer. You're going to hike the ball. You're going to sprint over here, and you can see how this guy is just going to get basically one-on-one, -on -one, right? Now, I run this, I'm more aggressive. I feel like if I got the right people in the right spots, I'm good to go. Yes, there is a, you know, Dickerson freight train that you have to worry about that you want to make sure that you have some cleanup. So that is something to consider. I want to make sure you understand that this is also a run that can go to the opposite side. So even when we set it up this way, I just want to kind of point out to you that we do have the ability to still have numbers on the left side and we are crashing the line left, right? So even if I'm over here, look at the numbers that we have on the left-hand side. He has three blockers plus his uh, center if he wants to count that, so that's four. And we've got four defenders, a free safety, and a user on the left. So they're really not going to choose to go to the left 
very often because if you look at it, they've got four defenders plus a center against four. So they're saying there's five on four to the right, and there's actually, for our sake, there's going to be five on four to the left. Everything makes a player want to go to the right. That's why I also like this because it really discourages people to go to left because you're going to have the numbers game anyways, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm just going to kind of just run this ball into the game. Oh, I went this way with it. So you can see how without putting your linebacker to basically um, help out, you can see that uh, number 74 picked him up. I didn't mean to, to hike the ball at that time, but I want to make sure that you see that. I was not going to the left. See, I went to the left of my, with my user because uh, I just kind of let go with it. You can see that this guy alters his, his, his angle and he got picked up, right? So let's go ahead and just show it one more time to end on a good note on the aggressive way of showing how it's going to work. We're going to do this a little bit faster here. So we're going to spread our linebackers. We're going to blitz that player, move him over, crash left, move this guy in a half a step, hike the ball, come down here, and you can see we got him blown up, right? You got a hit stick uh, or a uh, enforcer type player, you're going to have some great success there, right? Now let's talk about the approach in which we're going to be a little bit more conservative. What we're going to do is we're going to spread our D-line. We're also going to spread our linebackers, okay? So that's how it starts off with. So there's no base align, there's no show blitz. It's just spread D-line, spread linebackers. Then you're going to blitz that same player, all right? So we're looking like this right now, okay? Then we're going to crash up, okay? So now it goes inside. Yes, I want him to go inside on this setup, okay? Now, the last thing here is very important, and it has to do with Woods. I'm going to move him over to where he is to the right side of that linebacker to where basically he's above Lawrence, okay? And the reason for that is that we're going to try to get, and I'll say try because it does work every time, we're going to get the wide receiver to target him as a blocker. Why is that important? The reason why I do this is because the outside receiver B here, he's going to target Woods, leaving this cornerback to be free to always have outside leverage on this. The 4-4 split actually has two cornerbacks, four linebackers, four defensive uh, linemen, and a free safety. I put my strong safety because typically he's a much better um, tackler in this position in order to make sure that I just have a little bit stronger of a player, all I do is formation um, sub them in, knowing that I'm going against this um, formation to be able to make sure that I have a little bit more opportunity. And I'm not really using this formation for really anything else except for this type of run, right? So that's why I use that, right? And all you're gonna do here is make sure that that guy's there. And we're going to basically just kind of sit here and we're going to, with our user, go across it and just play the back shoulder of the running back. And the reason why is because you don't want him to cut back. As he goes right, you go back shoulder, back shoulder, all the way across the field. And what you're going to see is that you're going to have a much better opportunity with this setup to be able to contain the run and make it string out until somebody gets off of their block before he runs into his own defenders or eventually gets to our player on the right side, which is that cornerback that's going to be unblocked. Okay, so watch what happens here. You're just going to kind of go, got to go, kind of go, kind of go, kind of go. And now he runs right into that player, okay? So let me show you here what it looks like in slow-mo. And again, the reason why we, we move that safety over, and you can use this concept in other plays, if you like, in other stretch plays, by moving that safety over, 13 is retargeting to the inside. See how it retargets to the inside? And now what we're going to do is he's going to string it and string it and string it. And basically what we're doing here is just waiting for him to kind of cut it up the field. And if he never cuts it up the field, and most people don't, they're going to cut it outside, what you're going to see is that we're going to have our player and that player to the ball. Now, this is actually really good blocking by the Browns because not one of my players came off a block, right? And you can see that the guy, if he wants to cut it up, my user's right there. That's why I always play the back shoulder of the running back. I'm ready to, to basically plug any hole as he goes. And he's stringing it along, stringing it along until he runs into that player, okay? Let's show it to you one more time uh, before we wrap this video, just so you can see it. Again, spread D-line, spread linebackers, blitz the player here, A, that we've been blitzing all week, or all week, all video. And then what we're going to do is crash up, and that's going to change his, his angle. Again, move this player to the right, just above the defensive end, and go to your user. You can kind of keep him here, doesn't matter. We're just going to string it along. We're going to string it along, string it along, string it along. And that time we were able to get that player in. 
That's a bonus. It does happen often, but it's not something I'm counting on. I'm counting on stringing it along. If that guy comes through, great, right? So one last time here, so you can see it and end on you know some consistency here. Crash the D-line up, move this guy over, and then what you're gonna do again is use this player. I like to get right about here so I have a little bit more space to kind of get closer to the ball. We're gonna string it, string it, string it, string it, string it. And you can see here that we were able to get Lee to have that broken tackle. That's typically what happens. This is really the most common thing that I find is that when we string it long enough, your right outside linebacker usually will get that win against that tight end eventually. I mean, that tight end is blocking him, blocking him, blocking him. Even if he didn't, he's running into the outside player. You've got your player going, and this is typically what happens. This is why I tell, call this the conservative approach because it is something that, you know, if, if you get hit by that, you know, they might be able to get one or two, maybe three yards if they kind of run over your cornerback, which is a strong safety. But for the most part, stay on his back shoulder, see my user, stay on the back shoulder, stay on the back shoulder, wait, and be able to shut it down. So this is a really nice way of shutting down the single back wing tight Z halfback stretch, uh, something that um, you can definitely, uh, you know, put in your game plan right away. Uh, we showed you a 3-4 bear run defense yesterday, and there are, you know, um, playbooks out there that do have both the bear and the 4-4 split. So go take a look at that if you guys want to use this uh, or just add it into a custom playbook if you're playing regs or whatnot. We appreciate you guys. Make sure you go ahead and give us some more suggestions of things that you may uh, be struggling with and you may get featured on our next video. Thanks guys, I'll see you on tomorrow's video. Now if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you check out these videos below for the most helpful Madden tips. If you're looking to learn from the best players in the world, head over to www.playbook.gg for the most detailed game plans in Madden.